Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Product for Product. Thanks for listening this week. Today, we're wrapping up our series on in-app messaging. We were lucky to speak with some great guests regarding this space in product management, covering tools from AppQs, Intercom, Pendo, Braze, UserPilot. I think we learned a lot. So let's go ahead and hop in with the discussion and the wrap-up. How's it going, Mache? Hey, Matt. How are you? Doing wonderful. It's a uh, fall here in Atlanta, and the weather is very nice and, and sunny. And uh, Yes. Yeah, fall here also in Toronto, and I'm sure fall here in Toronto is a bit earlier and colder than the fall over there. <laughs> yeah, it's still yeah, it's relatively speaking, it's uh, still pretty pretty warm. It's still like 82, I think. So, uh, oh, okay. but uh, that's nice here for Atlanta. So, it's, uh, I'm not sure what 82 is. Here. Oh it's yeah, in, we have to do that. We have to convert. <laughs> We've done this before. We're off air. Yeah. yeah. But I but, see that today it's actually 14 degrees here, which is a bit chilly. But all in all, it's 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 nice weather. It's sunny having some great time outside and, and uh, really enjoying ourselves. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I, and I've seen pictures from um, up uh, province, I would say, rather than upstate, uh, mm-hmm. from one, mm-hmm. one of the parks uh, up north that it's like full lawn, full colors. Oh, already. wow. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, we're hoping to do that. Uh, usually that hits here in Atlanta towards the end of October. Mm-hmm. So as, as long as it doesn't get too wet and it, exactly. it, dri- it dries out nice, then we'll, yeah. we'll hopefully head to the mountains towards the end of the month. Very nice. Yeah, so I, I wish we could have like in-app messaging uh, also for the weather. So it's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could have converted our, our Celsius and Fahrenheit <laughs> issue. That will be one option. <laughs> or, you know, maybe one of those um, Google glasses. Where you oh, have... there you go. Yeah, that, yeah, that would have been... Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna bring those back out again one day. <laughs> just in contact lens form i think <laughs> exactly no, i've seen recently uh, like uh, glasses actually and new glasses i don't know which manufacturer it is but almost like the next generation of that oh, okay so th- th- that will be interesting to see what happens with that for sure but actually that will be another uh distribution channel for enough messaging just for yeah, your oh, life uh, oh right? absolutely yeah I'm, i go always go to minority report the movie minority report where they pop up yeah, these these yeah. these messaging that has like a picture of you and you're doing something uh, yeah, very futuristic yeah. but you know it's a way to communicate with you that's what's so fascinating about the in-app messaging space is because like you're saying it's it can be used in so many different ways mm-hmm. you can you can learn so much you know as a company but i think it can really empower the user with your product so i i really enjoyed this series we had yeah, me too. And and I think this is also one of the things that we, we learned throughout uh, the series about where it starts at any of those companies, but then where it evolves to other things and other solutions. Mm-hmm. Like when we talked with uh, Ken about Braze, when we started this, I didn't even, I wasn't even familiar with Braze. Although I know there is a lot of um, a lot of users and a lot of followers, mainly because it, to me, probably it wasn't on the radar because it is a marketing, it, it's more sold as a marketing tool for marketing people. Mm-hmm. But the way that Ken is using it also for all the needs that he has for enough messaging is great. Mm -hmm. So that was really interesting to learn over there. Same thing also with Intercom. I was familiar with Intercom from many places where I used it, only with their chat functionality that, you know, there is this little um, icon on your uh, screen and then uh, you can uh, send them a message, tell them you have a question or whatever, or they can send you a message and they interact with you. And then it's almost like it's a chat inside the application. But right. I didn't know that they have, you know, other type of features that are more close to what we were looking at for in-app, in-app messaging. So that was really, really cool to see. Yeah, right. And that's part of my naivete coming into the space. You know, we, we all go inside an application. And these days, one of our guests mentioned you almost have to have it now. I think it was Trevor that mentioned you almost have to have it in the application now. Or the user is going to be like, hey, where's my, where's my engagement? Where's my messaging? Mm-hmm. You know, where's mm-hmm. my chat or how can I reach out to somebody? Right. Um, and I mentioned Intercom was the one I was most familiar with. I think because they probably are mature in the space. This space is still growing, but you know, Intercom is probably the most mature of maybe this group. Yeah, so, maybe. Yeah. I, I'm not really sure if they're most mature in that area specifically. I, I can tell you from my experience that when I was looking for in-app messaging system, five years ago, it was either between Pendo or Intercom, Mm -hmm. but they were doing two very different things. Uh, Intercom had only the ability for me to put this um, in-app chat so I Mm -hmm. could communicate with the users. And my need back then, the, the job to be done that I had was to 
connect with my users so I can have access to them directly. So, so that was one option. Then the other option was Pendo where I could put a message telling them, uh, you know, I need your feedback and there was polls in there or just direct responses. But I, I found it at the time I chose Pendo actually because I didn't want to have that, you know, asynchronous chat system. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What I really wanted to do is a one-time thing to put in front of the users where I wanted to put it, uh, the ability to ask them, would you connect with me? Stuff like that. Or what is your opinion about this feature? Or this feature is, is being uh, sunset, or this is a new feature, see here, stuff like that. And, and that was not available back then in, in um, Intercom. So they have, uh, I guess, matured since then and mm-hmm. added this type of functionality. But that's also why I never realized until now they, they had it. <laughs> it's great you mentioned that because I'm thinking early on, the, these messaging platforms may have been reactive. They maybe required the user to engage with it as vice mm-hmm. versa. Now it may be more proactive in the sense mm-hmm. that it no longer requires the user to say, hey, I need to talk with someone. It says, hey, judging by your interaction with our application, right? You know, we are kind of predicting or saying typical yeah. users that get hit this page, you know, they have th- this kind of question. So yeah. maybe that's the part of, of the, the change. Yeah, at the end of the day, uh, first of all, once they see what other companies have done, it's it's you know possible to this type of products to add these type of functionalities and and get into that space as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's all about you know the technology that all the products are uh, being built on on top of, and and the type of distribution channels like we, we said before. So if it is a browser or if it is a mobile or if it is uh, whatever, if they already have um, uh, you know one type of feature based on this technology, then it should be easier for them to expand it to other type of features. You mentioned Pendo and Pendo. You know we've talked about Pendo before, where Pendo does seems like a little bit of everything. So going back to the analytics space, where you have amplitude and mixed panel, these are specialized mm-hmm. tools. It sounds right. like in this space, we also have specialized messaging. And then you have Pendo where, you know, it's kind of like I got my hands in several spaces. So, yeah, that's uh, true. That's true. So like we said back then, specialized pro- product or a platform that does more than just one thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was very interesting. Another interesting e- thing is that there are actually other players in this uh, space. And uh, when I was, uh, you know, looking for guests to join us, I actually contacted a few other companies. Well, usually I'm trying to find people on my own, not Mm -hmm. through the companies. But sometimes if I can't find anyone, you know, either on LinkedIn or Slack channels or whatever, uh, or people that hear the the podcast and and approach me. Uh, The other uh, uh, way that I do that is approaching the companies, um, you know, either on LinkedIn or through their website or something like that and trying to find their users. So some companies are very, you know, helpful with that. And they did help me to to find uh, the the right person to to talk with them. Uh, Others were were not so much. And, you know, in this space, um, there are other companies like Product Fruits is one, Gainsight PX is another one, uh, Simple is another one. So there are a few others and there are also lots of smaller ones, I think. Uh, so so maybe in the future, when we find the uh, users that will be willing to talk with us, if you guys are listening to that and you're using one of those products, so mm-hmm. please send us a note. We'd love to talk with you uh, because I think that this is a good, uh, useful um, service for all other product managers and, and people around that are looking to choose this type of product. So it, it's really interesting to to know where each one of those are how they're doing and stuff like that. Yeah, I agree. You know, obviously we can't touch all these uh, based on, you know, time or like you're saying, whether we can get people on the show, but it's still good to, you know, bubble them up to the surface. Cause I think if someone's mm-hmm. saying I'm looking for an in-app messaging platform, you know, they're going to be attracted by probably the larger ones that pop up in the search, Google search, but there's tons of other companies out there that may be better suited for them. Maybe that's even an opportunity for us to, to, maybe categorize some of these and, and have something for the listeners at some point down the road where we can say, yeah. Hey, this is the space that we've identified and mm-hmm. we can't cover all of them, but it may be a catalog of some sort. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's a good idea. There is also, we found through the streetures that there are some interesting articles out there about these things. And one of the companies, uh, user pilot, uh, when uh, we talked with them and we, lo- we looked at their website and their blog, 
they actually have uh, blog posts about what scenarios or what type of clients uh, fit them versus their competitors. So they're actually not afraid to say, you know, we're not for everyone. Mm-hmm. Some, uh, some uh, of our competitor uh, products might be better fit for other type of clients, which is really cool that they have done something like that. Yeah, that's refreshing because I think we've all, you know, either used a free product or used another product where we're like, man, I really, really wish it did this. Or you could be in kind of a fishbowl where you're like, oh, this is all the in-app messaging I've ever seen. I didn't even know mm-hmm. this other mm-hmm. stuff was even possible. Yeah. So to have a company be, you know, that open and transparent and be, you know, that right there is very attractive yeah. to new users of their product. I, I would exactly. Think. Yeah. yeah that- and it's also when we choose products for ourselves. It's very, um, it's like, you know, hiring a new uh, employee. Mm -hmm. You kind of have go through this hiring process. You have interviews. You feel really good about it on both sides. Uh, You start working together. You might have a three month period uh, probation or something like that to really get to know each other. And and then it might work and it might not. You Mm -hmm. might have a good fit. You might not have good fit. You might uh, find out that, you know, that person is not exactly what uh, they convey they are or their experience is not exactly what they said. Uh, Or they find out that the company as we sold it to them was not exactly what they thought it is. So (laughs) it could be a lot of different things. So (laughs) yeah, in in like any, any, any type of relationship, I think choosing a product is quite similar as well. You, you don't see really everything because it's hard to see everything in a very short time. Mm -hmm. Uh, You might fall in love with it or not. Uh, You might really like it or not. And then when you choose it and you start using it, then some of the, you know, the, the great things that it does or the not so great things that it does might pop up. Uh, So when a company actually saying, you know, we know that you might think that our product fits you, but based on our experience and based on our clients, we think that you will be better off with that other product. That's really cool. Yeah, that is. I think about hiring someone and it's like, uh, you know, if someone came out and be like, Hey, this is my resume. You know, that's the, that's the picture perfect view of someone. But mm-hmm. if they came out and said, Hey, I, I have uh, X, Y, and Z, you know, I need to tell you about before you hire me, you know, it's almost like, well, okay, that's pretty transparent. We don't expect that from a, a person, but right, right. to get it from a company. I mean, that's, that's really cool. And, and I, I know some of our guests were mentioning whether they've, they were using a product. I think actually I mentioned, you know, they had a product and they, they just started switching over to, I, I think it was AppQs. So right. it's not the, the great thing about these SaaS products and, and these in-app messaging products among all the other ones is that, you know, they're, they don't seem super sticky. I, I think there's definitely development that needs to be done, integrations. Obviously, the mm-hmm. deeper you get into it, the more complicated it gets to get off of it. But, you know, it yeah. does seem like you can, you can, if you find something better or more suited to your company, you can make that kind of switch. No, that's a really good point. Um, there is some stickiness in them, but you're right. It's not super sticky. The integration is one part, and usually they're making it these days very easy to integrate. So it's mm-hmm. also very easy to get it off. Mm-hmm. To, you know, but the the other part, and that goes directly into our, in your uh, court, is the data. Because once you start collecting data yeah. with one with one system, I think that's where they might try to be sticky or see how they they can. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, you, you tell me what, what you feel about that. Because uh, sometimes, you know, is it easy really to get the data out of that system and put it in somewhere else? And then also if you move to another system and you already collect the data That's uh, for, a, for a while on one, and then you start collecting data on the other one, probably you will not be able to, you know, insert or import all the data from, from the first system. That's right. I don't think is possible. But you, if you want to kind of merge them, you will need another BI system to do that. Right. And that's where you, you would plug in something like mixed panel amplitude, because I, I some of our guests mentioned that the analytics of these tools, you know, aren't super, you know, blown out. And then that's understandable. That's not their that's not their mm-hmm. their main focus. But yeah, to your point though, the data side of things, you could move, you could have one tool tracking some metric of click rates or whatever. And you shift to a new tool mm-hmm. and it doesn't do that or for some reason or it does it in a different way. You know, data likes to be synchronous. And when you lose that visibility or you lose that structure uh, or it doesn't do it in the same way, timestamps, for whatever reason, integrating those two together, say, 
this data doesn't mesh up. We need to create different tables and different views. Yeah, it can definitely get complicated. And that probably is a spot where it gets gets sticky once you've gone down that hole. Exactly. So, so it really depends on how much data you actually have from one to the other. And mm -hmm. if you don't have a lot, then it's not a big deal anyway. Yep. And also whether you really need to maintain that data or not. Um, yes. And, 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 the, and the other part is if you, have, if you do have a BI uh, you know, team and system and, and something like that, that could be very useful to help you actually you know, just store the data in a data warehouse. And right, that transform will, it. And transform it over there. Mm -hmm. Even if you're using like a mix panel or using, you know, Pendo that has their own data analytics, you might find it useful to merge everything into one data warehouse. Yeah, I think that's definitely a possibility there. If you want, we're looking to make a switch uh, between yeah. the products. Yeah, but I think the analytics space in general with this stuff, the ability to do experimentation, I mean, moving just beyond the descriptive, like, you know, what had happened in the past day, mm -hmm. you know, going into prediction and going into like, let's look at experimentation. Ken likes talking analytics like I do. Uh, so I, you know, I think back to what some of the stuff Ken, Ken talked about, but to do A and B testing, to do that mm -hmm. scientific research, how are my users interacting with this? Let me yeah. do some segmentation. Yeah, uh, there is there is another point that come to mind that we didn't really talk so much throughout the series, and that's related to product led. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned it earlier with uh, something that I think um, Trevor said about people are ex expectations and expecting to be led these days and to mm -hmm. have this this enough messaging to tell them what to do and where to go and stuff like that. Yeah. So so that's really part of the core of what product led is all about. Mm -hmm. where you make the system, first of all, you need to make the system, you know, easy to use. That's by, you know, definition. Right. But then you also want to help them find the value as soon as possible. And usually when, when users do find the value as, as soon as possible, they will also convert to... A paid pay, customer, typically. Well, even, even, even once they're paying customers, they may not find the value right away. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about... Um, you know, in the SaaS world where a lot of those are based on subscriptions, mm -hmm. you don't want, don't want them just to be paying customer. You want them to actually renew their subscription. Right. So that's part of it as well. Right. And, um, yeah, you know, advocates of the system. So part of finding this value is not waiting for them to find it, but actually directing them to find it. And, and that's one of those things that companies can uh, identify based on data, based on um, experimentation. What is... Uh, what are the features that will sh that show people actually convert to become continuous users? Uh, and there is, um, I believe this is uh, started with uh, Facebook, but maybe even before Facebook. But I think it's a, it's, there is a known story about Facebook that they found out that if someone is going to invite uh, or connect with like five friends within the first couple of days or something like that. Yeah. I, I don't know the numbers. I can't remember the numbers, so Sounds don't hold me. Then uh, they will continue using Facebook. And if they, they did not, they will not. So they have, they know, they know this based on data that they observed in the system. And that become the, the leading indicator for making the system help the user get to this specific behavior as soon as possible. LinkedIn and, does something like that too with the connections. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, it, th that's where um, in-app messaging is really helpful mm -hmm. because it doesn't wait for you to do it. It's actually based on who you are and your behavior and the time that you spend in the system and all lots of these different types of criteria. It can tell, can show you different things that it wants to show you. So if uh, in our product for whatever, you know, there is a feature to create some, some type of entity and then uh, we want to, the value in there is really by sending it to someone in the mail. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, then we created the entity, but we never send it to someone in the mail. Then the, the uh, value, we, we never got to that value where the system can actually identify we did it and then tell yeah. us, you see here, go and send it to someone. And it can also tell us why we should do it. Yeah, it's able to identify where you where you run into a roadblock or you where you fall off, drop off in the application. Uh, yeah, you, especially if we know, trouble. especially if we know the path that we want the user to take. Yep. So so that's really you know where that part of where product led uh, can shine, where you actually 
help the user through the application, learn the system faster and become a better user. Actually, I mentioned that with Haptic where they're, you know, you're building an AI bot and, you know, he mentioned leading the user through a tutorial of how to create mm -hmm. the bot because it, if you're just reading documentation or you're stuck anywhere, having worked in that space before, you can fall off and you can really lose, like, you can get frustrated and drop off mm -hmm. and say, okay, this isn't going to work. I'm not able to do it. But to have a guide there along the way, uh, he also mentions you don't want to give them too much or overdo it, hold their hand too much because part of learning is the pain of it. You know, it's like, that's what I tell my daughter. <laughs> and so, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, but you don't want to hold their hand too much and say, okay, Every time is going to be this easy, mm. but you got to, you can give them enough to where you, they don't stop using the solution. Mm -hmm. And that's also one of the tricky things about these um, onboarding guides. Like you mentioned the, you know, not too much, but not too little, but then also, you know, how many steps are okay for them to go through and how do we make it, you know, that they actually go through the entire thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can tell you that in, in one place, I might have mentioned it before, in, in one place that I worked, we did um, a guide to help users when they log in the first time and teach them about the system. So the guide was uh, 27 steps. And guess uh, where did we see people uh, fall f uh, dropping off the just using the guide? One? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I they, can't. They... <laughs> I can't. <laughs> So they, they drop out after uh, either the fourth or the fifth step. Okay. Yeah. So early yeah. on, early on, I was close. I was close. Yeah. So it's early on. It's not on the first one. They still wanted to see, you know, how yeah. to use it and whatever. But when they got to the fourth or the fifth, they were like, oh, this is way too much. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm out of here. Right. Yep. So I actually knew that it's not going to work, but I wanted to, you know, the person that wanted to create it to indulge him and, and, do that and fortunately you know we're using a system that it was we didn't need any developers time or anything like that mm -hmm. so we were able to uh to do that we, we use pando at the time yeah. but um you know there are articles out there about what is the right size and what are good practices for that mm -hmm. a lot of it is really trial and error so try something and see how people are reacting to that and change it as as you go so I don't think anyone really get it in the first go, like anything else that we do with our product. So it, it's really a feature of our product. Mm -hmm. We just build it in, in these tools that are available for us. So please don't leave the first one in there and just assume that it's amazing. No, that's a great use case. I like that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to, to, be able to see where, where someone is struggling uh, and then, you know, to see how many are actually su successful, how many people are actually getting yep. all the way through it then you could trim it down. You can scale it up. You can yep. clean out those bottlenecks of where people get trapped. And, you know, I like, the, and I like the point, it is a feature of the, the product. It is part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not just mm -hmm. a bolt on thing where, you know, and uh, I, I like that. It's, it's all part of the entire application. Yeah. yeah. To the end users, they don't really care how we build it, mm -hmm. whether we build it in house and we, use 10 developers to build this, or we purchase a license to one of the system, integrate it and start creating those in-up guides. To yep. them, it's it's all one and the same. But for us, it's just, we use that you know platform to do it. That, that's all it is. And if we are lucky enough in our uh, company, there is actually someone responsible for that rather than the product manager. So it really depends you know, where we work and how this system is set up. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have... Um, it depends also number of clients and number of those guides and messages and stuff like that to have uh, people that it's not just a product manager involved in this. And, and like I said, in some, in a lot of companies, you do have people that that's their job. So they are the one that are responsible for this type of messaging. Either it is uh, marketing campaigns or guidance on how to use the system or whatever it is, everything will channel through them, which creates a bit of um, order in the chaos uh, mm -hmm. to uh, make sure that they all look and feel the same, that they're targeted to the right person, that the language is similar and stuff like that. Our guests were, were mentioning that where, you know, they're not just the only one using it. You know, they, they liked it in the product management space as far as ownership of the, the tool itself. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you probably need some administration around it to say, okay, like, let's have a uni uniform message right. uh, format. Uh, this is how we do it. That way we're not stepping on each other's feet. Yeah, exactly. And, and um this is interesting also to see with each one of those companies who they target. If they target the marketing people, they target the product people, or they target some other type of people in the organization. And I've seen changes also in this uh, over time uh, because um, 
the, what what is important for you know product people may not be as important for some other people or what is product for for marketing is not the same as as others as well uh, I, I think for product people it's more to me at least it's two two things one of them is the ability to have that functionality in the system so enablement of this type of functionality so anyone in the organization that has some type of messaging that they want to come through to the users through the application will be able to do it mm-hmm. that's one thing and then the second thing is related to you know what we discussed before the onboarding and and making sure users actually convert and and um, understand the system in, in the best way that possible leads me to think about and you could hopefully speak to this with your experiences you know 10 years ago you know I think product management wasn't much of a, a role I suppose it was more mm-hmm. of a marketing uh, yes. and maybe some of these tools were like hey we're marketing to you know sales and marketing and as these paths have diverged between sales and marketing and products maybe they're having to reevaluate how they're sell, selling their product how they're designing their product uh, oh, themselves absolutely. yeah and so that goes uh, back to the product led uh, discussion mm-hmm Because in many organizations, if they're sales-led, uh, then that is, you know, they will drive things based on who paid the money to build something or who they can sell it to. Where product-led is more like, where, what is the proper product market fit? Who are mm-hmm. the right users for this? And everyone will align, align around that. Sales will still be part of this because they will have to find these users and clients that are fit the bill and fit this client product uh, um, market fit and and also depends on the complexity of the product in, in many cases they will have to go through you know still pre-sales and demos and stuff like that mm-hmm. but with product led there is much more opportunities these days for users to try it on their own and see if if it is a good fit for them even before they speak with sales yeah I like that yeah and, and to do that part of it is is really to be a self-served application that is easy for them to jump on start right away and you start using it without anyone help and that means like how can we help someone learn something that might be quite complex so either we limit some of the functionality so they cannot use everything or we don't even show them some of it because we want to introduce things as they go And I think Slack is doing something like that. Mm. Um, and then the other thing is those onboarding uh, guides to really help them through the process of learning what's available. Anything else you think we should um, talk about regarding enough messaging in our wrap-up? I think whether you're a big company or a small company, I think in-app messaging really offers a lot of opportunity. I'm really excited about this space and, and, and watching it grow and, and really hopefully going to dive in more after this series and hopefully we can circle back around at a later date and continue to talk absolutely. about it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And again, if everyone uh, that listens to us uh, want to share their experience with other products or with the products that we talked about, uh, please send us a line. Uh, we'll love to hear from you. This has been fun. Yes, uh, definitely. And I'm excited also about our uh, next few episodes. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't decide yet what is going to be the next series, but uh, we recorded a few off-series uh, episodes that we're excited to uh, share everyone with. Uh, so definitely please uh, stay tuned because there are some exciting uh, guests coming on the show. Yeah, really excited about the, the guests we have uh, lined up. And I think they're going to offer some great insights into product, culture, getting into your product career, growing your career. So yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. really excited to uh, to get these out there and uh, hopefully they'll really be rewarding to the the listeners for sure definitely well great well thank you so much uh, Moshe and uh, to all listeners thank you so much for listening uh, please drop us feedback we really do appreciate it thank you Matt that was a pleasure take care everyone take care bye